Sometimes, the devil attacks because he is afraid of what's inside you. Every child of God has an enviable destiny. At redemption, God plants the seed of greatness in the life of every child. And he also repositions him to the high places of life, beyond the reach of the devil, the principalities, and powers. And this devil doesn't like this. He hates the idea with passion. Hence he fight tooth and nail to prevent potential believers, from ascending this height. He brings fear, faithlessness, unbelief, doubts, the propensity to sin, and at times even physical attacks and opposition. All meant to stop you from attaining the glorious heights, that God has set before you. Paul says, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. The same is true of all potential believers. God has put good plans, great achievements, and great heights in place, and it is waiting for you. But the devil, the adversary is always on the lookout for an avenue, opportunity, or loophole to stop you. And abort your great and enviable destiny. But I pray he fails in Jesus' name. The Bible says, that at new birth, believers are spiritually moved to be seated with Christ, in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But, the devil doesn't like this. How could a mere man, be seating with Christ in heavenly places, beyond his reach and control? And so the devil detests the idea of a man getting saved, and making it into this position and destination. Nevertheless, that is the destination of every born-again child of God. At new birth, God plants a new seed of greatness and programs a new destiny for you. And also changes your positioning, in order to secure it. So when you see the devil attack or oppose you, it is not because he doesn't like your face, nor because you have done anything to him. It is mostly because of what you carry, the seat of greatness. It is because he has seen the great deposits and potentials, that God has deposited in you. Like in human parlance, you don't pursue after what you don't need. You don't aspire to get what is of no value or use to you. You don't waste time or disperse energy, on what is of no value or use to you. The amount of energy and resources you invest or put in to secure or get a thing is largely dependent on the anticipated outcome or gain. When you have got the thing, that is even so with the devil. Although for the wrong reasons and purposes, the devil fights you because he knows what you have got. He sees what you are carrying or because he needs what you have. And since he hasn't got and cannot get what you have, he tries to steal what you have got from you. And if he cannot steal it, he tries to kill it or destroy it. Just to make sure he aborts it from manifesting. Because he knows, with your manifestation, many things will fall in place. Many destinies will be saved. Many people will have reasons to rejoice, and give glory to God. Many people's struggles and suffering, will be eradicated or at worst alleviated. Little wonder the Bible says, in Romans chapter 8 verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. The devil hates this and tries everything, to see if it could stop the manifestation of the sons of God. Because, they are the hopes of all creation for a better life, elevated life, and life with dignity. The devil has hated man since God made man, and gave him what the devil had desired to have. He fights and works against man's emancipation. So when the enemy, the devil, is after you. Don't ever kowtow, or get weary and discouraged. Instead, see it as a sign that you have got something worthwhile. Something enviable, something great that he wants to steal. See it as a sign that you have in you great potential. You know that children don't throw stones at trees, that have no precious fruits or seeds they need. It is the trees that have precious fruits, that receive more stones throw often. Especially if the fruits are ripped. If a tree has no desirable fruits, nobody wastes time and energy casting stones on it. Because there is nothing to benefit or gain from doing so. Even so, it is with the devil. He opposes you because he sees the great gift, and potential God has deposited in you. So, 
when the devil casts or throws stones at you. It is because you have got what is valuable and enviable. You have got a great and enviable destiny and he wants to steal it. The Bible confirms this in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10. It says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Here the Bible defines the three missions of the devil, which are to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Thank God for Jesus, who has given us the powers of victory over the devil. In other words, when you see the devil whom the Bible refers to here, as the thief coming. He is coming for either of the three missions. It must be because he has seen something to steal. And where there is nothing to steal or to kill or to destroy, don't expect the devil there. Because he won't like to go there. Because, the devil attacks for the purposes of stealing, killing, or destroying. Most important to him is to steal. That is why the Bible mentions first, that he cometh not but to steal. Because that was his primary mission. He mainly attacks to steal great destinies, great gifts, and great potential. He only opts for killing and destroying, where and when he is unable to steal. His own is that if he cannot steal, then he must not allow it to exist or manifest. Let him then kill or destroy it. The devil is really wicked. He is always out to steal or hinder great visions, great dreams and great potential for manifesting. No wonder he answered God, in the book of Job chapter 1 verse 7, that he has been moving to and fro, because he hates to see good in men, because he wanted allegiance from man instead of to God who made him. The same reason God expelled him, the devil, from heaven, for wanting to assume the position of God. So he comes to the world to become the archenemy of man. He tries to abort by all means, every of God's gifts in man. Many times he does so, using his human collaborators, and hid under them to perpetuate his evil missions. But ultimately, we know as children of God, that it is the devil that is at work. To abort vision. To destroy purpose. To abort a glorious destiny. To fight against the plans of God. But the good news is that God hasn't given the devil all the powers. God hasn't given the devil the powers of unlimited access to man. We saw it in the trial of Job, that the devil has no such powers, to go beyond the limits as having been allowed by God. So many times, what the devil uses to maneuver his way. If you are not sensitive to his tricks is deceit. The Bible calls it, the wiles of the devil. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles here mean the tricks of the devil. But glory is to God. Who has given man powers to defeat the devil. In the book of James chapter 4 verse 7. The Bible says. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It means that man has got the power to resist the devil. To get him routed and put to flight. You have got the powers to allow the devil or to disallow him. As we see in the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. The Bible says. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This power has already been given and it domiciles with believers. So you have the powers to forbid the devil and he stands forbidden. That is how powerful God has made man. But the more good news is that God has given you, all you needed as his redeemed, to function optimally here on earth. It includes both physical and spiritual resources. The Bible captures it this way in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. God has given us blessings. Jesus has given us everything we need to live and serve God. We have these things because we know him. Jesus called us by his glory and goodness. Wow! What a good news! Is that not wonderful? Enviable you may say. Or powerful. Or glorious, but that is who we are and what we have got in Christ. And nothing can take it away from us. Not even the devil. 
for we have the powers to fix him, the devil. Therefore, I prophesy to you. Your destiny shall not be cut short. Your destiny shall not be stolen in the name of Jesus. But you have got the choice to make. Either to walk or cooperate with God, and see your glorious and enviable destiny, flourish and manifest hassle-free. Or you cooperate with the devil and have your glorious destiny stolen, killed, or get destroyed. For that is the devil's threefold mission. But the choice is yours. But I prophesy to you once again. Your destiny shall not be stolen. You shall amount to what God has said you will be. No devil shall cut your destiny short. Any devil trying to shortchange you is cursed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Alright. Kindly give us a thumbs up to like this video, subscribe, and leave the notification button on so that you will be notified whenever we release a new video. God bless you.